Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. December 15th, 2017. The Cooner Report, presented by Kelly Financial Services. This is the Cooner Report. Who watches The Watchmen? Who watches The Watchmen? That is an ancient question going all the way back to the time of Athens in ancient Greece. Who guards the guardians? That is now the question that is increasingly being posed by many people up on Capitol Hill and within the Trump administration itself. Because now there are two new damning pieces of evidence that clearly show, my friends, without a shadow of a doubt, there needs to be a new investigation into Hillary Clinton, and there needs to be a second investigation into the FBI itself. Okay, two explosive revelations, my friends. And to me, what is stunning is that the liberal mainstream Democratic media won't even touch it. They are deliberately trying to ignore these explosive revelations because their world is about to come crashing down and they're hoping by ignoring it, it just may go away. The first is that Fox News has obtained the original draft of the speech that James Comey was eventually delivered on July 2016. Now, why is this important? The original draft speech was dated May 2nd, 2016. May 2nd, 2016. In other words, months before the final conclusion, before Hillary Clinton herself was even interviewed, before nearly 20 of the key players in the Hillary private email server scandal were even interviewed, they already had exonerated her. They already, so in other words, before the investigation was even properly done, hell, even properly started, the fix was in. And they deliberately, deliberately set out on a path to make sure to do a sham investigation and thereby guarantee that Hillary Clinton would be cleared. But it gets even worse. It gets even worse. On that draft memo, Comey himself admits that Hillary Clinton, he's going through everything that, you know, what they have found so far, that she did engage in gross negligence. But they eventually purged that term and changed it to extreme carelessness because they knew that gross negligence would land her in jail. But the kicker is this. In the actual draft speech itself, Comey admits, listen now to this, that five, not one, not two, not three, not even four, but five foreign governments, they don't state which ones, actually hacked into, or they say likely, it was very likely, that they had hacked into Hillary's private server and stolen many of her private emails. They knew. Now, the five countries that I'm guessing are probably Russia, China, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and maybe North Korea. I will bet you the best stake at the Hanover Street Shop House that those were likely the five foreign powers that completely uh, hacked and stole much of our classified top secret information which, by the way, that she stored on a server and a mom-and-pop firm in their six feet from their toilet. I'm not exaggerating. It was in their bathroom. And so Comey himself admits that it was the probability was very likely that five foreign powers actually hacked and stole uh, many of our top-secret classified information. In another age and in another time, she would have been hung she would have either been executed or she would have been publicly hanged for selling our classified secrets down the river like this or for compromising them like this. Instead, he deliberately guaranteed that she would be exonerated and get away scot-free. 
Then the second bombshell revelation. Listen now to this. It now has turned out through a Freedom of Information Act request, big hat tip to Judicial Watch, because they're the ones that broke this story wide open, that while the FBI was investigating Hillary and her uh, right-hand woman, Huma Abedin, they allowed them to take out five, five boxes full of documents and evidence. They just allowed them to take them right out of the State Department. And not only were they just five boxes, it contained her schedule, it contained the logs of her phone calls, it contained her gift, her gift logs. You know, the Clinton Foundation, all the gifts that she was given, all of this now, who she was talking to on the phone, who she was meeting, all of this, they let her walk out with it, and I will bet you that they have already destroyed all of the evidence. And one of those documents, one of those boxes full of documents, was marked Muslim engagement documents. Let me repeat that. One of the boxes the State Department has admitted were marked Muslim engagement documents. Huma Abedin had close ties to the Muslim Brotherhood. The Obama regime had close ties to Islamists and uh, Muslim organizations all over the world. What the hell are they covering up? And you allow them to walk away with documents? Five boxes? And this is all agreed to by the FBI? Are you freaking kidding me? And you will never see those documents or those boxes again. The fix was in. The fix was in. Now, what this means in plain English is very simple. This is very simple now. James Comey, a complete and utter corrupt political hack, the dirtiest cop in America, acted essentially as a shield for Hillary Clinton. And what he did by deliberately exonerating her before all the evidence was in, and in fact exonerating her knowing that she had committed crime upon crime upon crime, so then to create the sham, the fig leaf of an investigation, but then to do everything in his power to guarantee that she would then be acquitted, let go, he obstructed justice. James Comey, for what he did, this is now, to me it's almost irrefutable now, Comey must now go to jail. Andrew McCabe, his number two, at the center of all of this, he must now go to jail. Peter Strzok, the infamous FBI agent, Superman, the Cape Crusader, James Bond. The guy who sent text messages to Lisa Page. The one who said, we must help Hillary at all costs. In fact, as he put it, he referred to Trump as a, quote, menace. And that we cannot afford the risk, quote-unquote, of Trump winning the election and Hillary losing. We need a, quote-unquote, insurance policy to ensure that she wins and he loses. What was that insurance policy? The Trump dossier. Going through Fusion GPS to get that Trump dossier to then go to the FISA court, to the FISA court to then start uh, spying on the president or then candidate Trump, his inner circle, and it was Peter Strzok that signed the first papers to launch the FBI investigation into so-called Trump collusion with Russia. So what they said was this. We're going to do everything in our power to prevent Trump from winning the election and Hillary losing. And if he does win, we are going to stain his presidency from the beginning by coming up with this phony, bony, phony, baloney Russia collusion narrative. This is the greatest scandal in American political history. I am choosing my words now very, very carefully. Because what it shows is that there was a conspiracy, a plot, 
by top officials within the FBI to try to ensure that one presidential candidate, i.e. Hillary Clinton, not just win, but that she get away with crimes. With actual crimes. And to do this to sabotage and undermine another presidential candidate, and then when he won, to continue to pursue this attempt to destroy his presidency. Where is Jeff Sessions? At this point, this is the $64,000 question. Where is Attorney General Jeff Sessions? Because now the evidence is beyond dispute. Comey must go to jail. McCabe must go to jail. Strzok must go to jail. Lisa Page must go to jail. And you see, my friends, what is different, this is what is unique about this case. As an historian now, I'm, I'm speaking now not as a uh, political commentator or a talk show host, but as a former historian who taught at McGill, okay, the Harvard of the North. There's always been corrupt individuals in power and in government. There's been corrupt attorney generals. There's even been corrupt FBI directors. There have been corrupt presidents even. But what is uniquely new about this is the systemic corruption, the pervasive corruption all across the FBI, all across the Justice Department, all across the NSA, all across the CIA. And this occurred primarily under the Obama regime. And in particular, the FBI, we now realize, was turned essentially into an American version of the KGB. A fourth branch of government. Completely rogue. Uh, they believe themselves to be above the law. They believe themselves to be now, as, as, um, as Strzok and his girlfriend, his mistress put it, you must save the country. Like as if, whatever, he's James Bond, Sherlock Holmes, and Batman all in one. Not the people of America, not our elected representatives. No, 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 no. Peter Strzok knows what's best for America, and what's best for America is to bring Donald Trump down at all costs. How this guy is still having a job at the H... I know they've demoted him, but he's sitting at HR. How this guy still has a job in the Human Resources Department is beyond me. He should have been fired a long time ago, but he wasn't. And in fact, when Mueller demoted him, he refused to even notify Congress or the reason why. Because he's covering up for Strzok. What's he covering up? That the FBI has now gone rogue. That's what Mueller is covering up. We need now a fresh, new investigation into Hillary Clinton. She needs to be reinvestigated because the first one was clearly a sham. And we need a second investigation. An investigation into the FBI itself. And I return to my question. Who watches the Watchmen? Who watches the FBI? Who watches the Department of Justice? Who watches those in our federal agencies? And if it's not us, and if it's not Congress, then who? Because now Congress is threatening to cite the FBI with contempt of Congress citations because every time they ask for documents regarding the Trump dossier, Fusion GPS, uh, Peter Strzok, James Comey, anyone, Andrew McCabe, whose wife, by the way, got $700,000 from Terry McAuliffe and other Democrats when she ran for a state Senate race in Virginia. $700,000 for a state Senate race is obscene. It's obscene. He's a Democratic pro-Clinton hack. Congress has been stonewalled every step of the way. My friends, you often ask me, what can we do? It is now very simple. Pressure must now be applied to Jeff Sessions. And the Attorney General must now do his job. And he doesn't even need a special counsel. Just order a fresh investigation into Hillary and her crimes, 
and order a fresh investigation into the FBI. If he will not step up to the plate and do his job, it is time for him to resign. And if he won't resign, it is time for President Trump to say you're fired and get me an attorney general who'll do the job. Mr. President, if everybody else is afraid to do it, give me a call. I'm, I swear, I'm not kidding. If nobody else has the guts to stand up to Hillary and Comey and McCabe and Strzok and Mueller, give me a call. 617-266-6868. I'll quit my job. I love it. Don't get me wrong. But I'll step down as the host. By tomorrow, I can be in Washington, and we can start throwing people in jail. You want to reach me, Mr. President? 617-266-6868. Is it time for a fresh investigation into Hillary and a second investigation into the FBI? I say yes. What do you say? All of your calls. Next. Uh, to President Trump, <clears throat> That's uh, give me a call. If you need somebody to replace Jeff Sessions, who frankly has the guts, the cojones, to go after Hillary and go after the FBI and Robert Mueller, I love my job. Don't get me wrong. Uh, iHeart just signed me up for another year. So, but, but, for you, for the country, I can be in Washington uh, by tomorrow morning. Uh, my wife will back me on this a thousand percent. Get rid of him. I'll be your AG. I'll pull the trigger, baby. Just give me a call. 617-266-6868. Okay, Mike and Newton, you're up first. Go ahead, Mike. Jeff, you better hope some of these bombshells, this one, this bombshell that you've been dropping since you've been on the radio, and you know, I'm, I know you're a clarion call for what's going on, but some of these bombs are going to stop blowing up, my friend. <laughs> Believe me, I mean, the bomb is, but I'll tell you one thing, Jeff. You've got to remember one thing about Jeff Sessions. He's wallowed in that swamp for a long time, too, hasn't he? Mike, I'm starting to think they have something on him. I think so, Jeff. Believe me, there's something there with Bo we got. But I'm going to say this, Jeff. If this case is, it's, in other words, his life is going to have to happen. You're going to have to show me the murder weapon and show me the body. Then we'll move on it. Uh, Mike, thank you for that call, thank as you. always. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Family. God bless you, Mike. Uh, look, right, look, it, it, honestly, I, the ball now is in, frankly, it's in President Trump's court. If I'm the president, I don't care what the media says, I would call Jeff Sessions. I say, look, are you what? Are you listening to the Cooner Report? Are you watching, I don't know, Sean Hannity? Are you, there's, it's not just me that's reporting this. Uh, the evidence is overwhelming. Now, Jeff. Either you redo the investigation into Hillary and start investigating the FBI and stand up to the deep state. And if you're not willing to do it, howdy doody, tender your resignation. I'll find somebody else that will. And if Giuliani won't do it, I've got this guy, K-U-H-N-E-R, Jeff Cooner, Boston's bulldozer. Believe me, forgive, pardon my French, he's got the balls to do it. He'll do it. And I've been telling this to the president now. Give me a call, 617-266-6868. And I'll even do it just for a year if you want, okay? It'll be a one-year deal. That's all. That's it. I'm not doing it for the money. Don't even pay me, okay? Honest to God, I've got enough saved away. I can sell a house or something. It, don't even pay me. I'll do it for free. Just give me a call. Nick in Weymouth. Go ahead, Nick. Brother Jeff, and before I forget, Merry Christmas to you and all the crew, Brittany and Jared, everybody. Thank you. That, Thank you, Nick. Jail. All the best to you and your family, my friend. Thank you, brother. Okay, whether it's a corporation or a government or any kind of organization that's gone awry, if you come in and take it over, the first thing you do is pick out the right people to remove the bad people that are there. Anyone, there's probably no more than three or four United States senators it would have been an adequate attorney general. Sessions obviously is not one. In the Congress side, out of those four or five hundred individuals, there may be five. Okay? That was not the place to go for United States Attorney General. Jeff, you still there? I'm listening to every okay. word, Nick. Okay, the other thing is, this big Russian thing, oh, oh, excuse me. 
what you're hearing from the Department of Justice, who has been fighting the, the congressional committees just as much as Obama's uh, uh, Department of Justice was fighting the congressional committees. There's no difference. They're the same, same bum, right? And what do you hear? Oh, it's in the hands of the, of the IG. Geez, let me think. The IG. How about the IG that was at the State Department when Hillary was there? Guess what the answer was? There was no IG because the one previously appointed by uh, Bush was a crook, Congrat, whatever his name was. Uh, bad, con- bad uh, contracts, whatever. Uh, Nick, Nick Iraq, what you're right. saying is this. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Exactly. And there was no new IG until nine months after uh, Clinton left. Okay? So the IG is not going to be, be believed, whatever he comes up with. We need to get rid of these bonds. When someone Bingo. goes to jail, Jeffrey, that's when it gets over. Thank you, Bob. Bingo. Bingo. Look, I know Trump's got a lot on his plate, okay? And it's only been 11 months into his presidency. And he's got basically everybody against him. So, you know, it's easy to say, fire him, fire him, fire him. But these Obama holdovers are killing him. I mean, they're killing him now at this point. And that he's, look, when you're in a gunfight, I'll tell you this, you don't want Jeff Sessions by your side. With all due respect, great senator, probably a nice guy. You need a guy that's going to go with you and start taking him down. And Sessions, for whatever reason, is maybe great senator, genteel guy, smart guy, but he's you're not AG material. Now, it's a gunfight. Holster up, put on your six shooters, and let's go. It's, it's showdown at the high noon at the OK Corral. Where the hell is Jeff? Okay, John Bolton will be on to discuss this at 1235. You don't want to miss it. But first, should Trump pardon Mike Flynn? Well, guess what? The president is seriously considering it. Jackie Murphy has the absolute latest on it in the WRKO newsroom. Take it away, Jackie. 1236 here on the great WRKO. Okay, joining us now, he usually does so at 105, uh, but we're lucky enough to get him today for 1235, is former UN ambassador, Fox News analyst, and a seasoned observer of the political scene, John Bolton. Ambassador Bolton, thank you so much for coming on the Cooner Report. Well, glad to be with you. Thanks for having me. Um, Ambassador, I've got to ask you, uh, you obviously served in the Reagan administration, in the George W. Bush administration. You've been around the block, as they say. The stunning revelations that Hillary Clinton, Huma Abedin, were able to walk out with five boxes containing documents, their logs, gift logs, uh, call logs, schedules, one box with, the, apparently, according to Fox News, Muslim engagement documents written on the box. Uh, then we find out that Comey, in his draft speech, admitted that it was, quote-unquote, likely that five foreign governments had hacked into Hillary's private email server, and yet the fix was in. And he exonerated her essentially months before the investigation was completed. Have you ever seen anything like this in your career? The complete corruption and politicization of the FBI? And is it time now for a new investigation into Hillary? And an investigation into the FBI for essentially them now declaring themselves or acting like they're a fourth branch of government? Well, I, I have never seen anything like it, and each revelation, uh, really, I have to say, I'm, I've been a strong supporter of the FBI. I've worked with them when I was at the Justice Department on a whole range of issues. I've worked with them when I was at the State Department on counterintelligence and other matters. I've done it as a private citizen. I have great faith uh, in the average FBI agent. I think they're patriots. I think they're non-political. Uh, I think they are untouchable, but I have to say... Uh, I am very badly shaken by all of these uh, revelations that you've been describing because it reflects a politicization of the FBI that, that not only stains its reputation, but I think uh, calls into question the faith that most Americans have in, in the uh, integrity of the FBI itself. I think the same is true of the Justice Department. 
uh, I just don't understand how it's possible for some of these things to have happened when we know uh, that there was an ongoing investigation. Now, what I suspect is the answer is that Comey made up his mind what the outcome was going to be in Hillary's case uh, even earlier than we already suspect, uh, because I think he had just decided he was going to interpret the relevant statute to require uh, specific intent when we know that, in fact, what happened was gross negligence. I mean, that's the most benign way you can put it. But the fact is now uh, that even in the Trump administration, the Justice Department does not seem to realize uh, that its reputation and reputation of the FBI, which is a part of the department, is being called into question. I thought uh, the Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein's testimony on Wednesday before the House Judiciary Committee was oblivious at best and I think at worst arrogant. Uh, in its dismissal that there could be any politicization uh, in the Mueller independent counsel investigation and apparently no willingness on the part of the Department of Justice to go back in and look at the Hillary email case again uh, or any of the numerous points that have been raised about the Clinton Foundation and and, uh, possible corruption there. So I hope that uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions is preparing to do something about this because uh, uh, because the revelations we've had to date, I do think, have had a corrosive impact uh, on our faith in uh, law enforcement. And uh, that's not good. It's not good for the country. It's not good for conservatives in particular, uh, because this is a, a thin line that stands between us and becoming a third world country in many respects. Uh, and I think what happened under Obama, the politicization of these critical institutions of government, as with, uh, I, I also fear, his politicization of the, of the officer uh, ranks, the four-star uh, admirals and, and generals uh, in the military, has had some of the same effect. So it's a very serious time. Ambassador, we have the original draft, and he's exonerating Hillary. Before he's, I'm talking Comey now, he's exonerating Hillary, months before he even interviews Hillary, or nearly 20 of the other key players involved regarding her private email or the use of her private email server. He apparently admits, even in the original draft, that it is, quote-unquote, likely that five foreign governments hacked her private email server and stole God knows how many of our classified secrets. And yet, obviously, the fix was in. And so it seems to me, and you tell me if I'm overreading this, Ambassador, that they saw their job as not to do a true, impartial, objective investigation, but a sham investigation, and their job was to clear and exonerate Hillary. If that's the case, Comey obstructed justice. And if he obstructed justice, shouldn't he go to jail? Yeah, well, I think there's still a lot we don't know there. I've, I've thought for some time this was mostly all about the greater glory of James Comey and uh, how he was going to take credit for uh, handling this investigation and coming to the right results. Since, remember, at the time of his famous press conference in the summer of 2016, everybody, and I mean everybody, uh, thought that Hillary was going to win. Uh, so to my mind, this was sort of uh, Jim Comey's job interview uh, as to why he should stay on as FBI director in the Hillary Clinton administration. I think he twisted the statute uh, in a way that required a, a specific intent that's uh, uh, relevant for one section, but not for a section uh, uh, that would involve the kind of gross negligence that Hillary had been involved in. And this uh, point that you make about the uh, likely availability of the emails to foreign governments is is very important. If you had a situation, just hypothetically, where somebody had been grossly negligent, left classified materials on their desk or something like that, but there was no evidence that anybody had come into the office or tried to copy the papers, there are no foreigners in the building, it was a secure building, you know, you would still have gross negligence, but you could say no harm, no foul, maybe. But if you felt nearly certain that foreign governments had, in fact, gained access to the classified information in Hillary's emails, then you would have to say 
that her negligence had consequences, serious negative consequences for the United States. And that is an impetus to prosecute. So that change is not just sort of changing happy to glad in a drafting sense. It's a very substantive change, and it reflects where I think Comey wanted to go. Now, if there's more there that uh, does amount to obstruction, then he could be at risk. But, you know, until the Justice Department and the FBI open up on this more, Congress is never going to find out. Um, Ambassador, we know the point man for the FBI was Peter Strzok. He was also the one that first initiated the investigation into the so-called collusion between Trump and Russia. He's also the one that essentially got Flynn on that so-called perjury trap. He, we now know some of his text messages. His text messages have been released with him and his mistress, Lisa Page. In those text messages, he openly says that Trump is a quote-unquote menace, that we cannot afford the risk of Hillary losing and Trump winning the election, and that we need a quote-unquote insurance policy to prevent that from, happen, from happening. His mistress, Lisa Page, even texts him back, saying almost like he's Superman, you're the only guy protecting our country right now. I mean, just the arrogance and the hubris to me is unbelievable, but let that go. This suggests to me, more than just these are rabid partisan Democrats, this suggests to me that they took it upon themselves to do something to try to bring down President Trump. And yet when Rosenstein was asked about the Trump dossier, did the FBI pay for it? He wouldn't answer the question. When asked whether the dossier was used to go to the FISA court to spy on President Trump, again, he wouldn't answer the question. And so my question to you is this. Were Peter Strzok and Lisa Page part of a conspiracy, a plot within the FBI, whereby the FBI now went rogue and essentially threw its weight behind one candidate in order to defeat another candidate, and then when that candidate shockingly won in November, i.e. Trump, they continued with their attempt to sabotage the president. Am I wrong? Well, I don't think we know enough yet to answer the question, but it's certainly the case that a lot of Americans think that. And that's why, uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, again, on Rosenstein's testimony a couple days ago, uh, he was displaying either complete lack of awareness of what people are concerned about or exactly the same kind of arrogance that we saw from Strzok and others. Uh, look, it, it, the reality in the bureaucracy is that uh, somebody like Strzok or Many of the other people who have connections with Hillary Clinton's campaign are not going to say in a meeting at senior levels of the FBI, we can indict Hillary because if we did, uh, Trump would win the election and we can't have that. That's not how the bias manifests itself. Uh, it manifests itself in much more subtle ways. Uh, and, and you can imagine how that played out, like the edits in Comey's statement that Strzok is reported to have made. So, so Rosenstein testifies he sees no bias in the actual conduct of Mueller's investigation. The bias is right in front of it. The bias is evident, and, and the, the proof is in these emails. This is unacceptable for an FBI agent, particularly a senior, very senior uh, FBI agent. If he's got political views that strong, it's his right as an American citizen to hold them, uh, and he should get a job outside the federal government. Uh, because what Rosenstein is doing is he is now participating uh, in undercutting the people's faith in the institutions of the Department of Justice and the FBI by not seeing what's obvious to everybody outside the government, that you've got people in that investigation who had a vested interest in making it turn out the way they wanted to politically. I think that's clear. And it's just shocking to me to see this in senior FBI agents. Uh, Ambassador, I know we're up against time, but I want to ask you one final question. Do you think it's now time for Jeff Sessions to step up to the plate and order a fresh new investigation into Hillary Clinton, since the original one was clearly a sham? And do you think it's time for him to order a second investigation? I'm not talking special counsel. A second investigation into the corruption and politicization of the FBI. 
Uh, I think the answer to both those questions is yes. And, you know, if if it turns out there's no politicization, uh, then okay, so be it. Uh, I don't think that's what it's going to turn up. And I think if you don't root out uh, the politicization, if you don't get rid of it root and branch, uh, I think people's faith in our judicial system, in our in our in our law enforcement system, uh, is going to be hit even harder than it has been already. This has enormous consequences. Uh, you know, people talk about. Uh, looking at Hillary Clinton as if we're a third world country where the loser of an election goes to jail. I think it's even worse than that now. We have a country where the loser is trying to put the winner in jail. Uh, and, and I find that even worse. So, look, this is uh, this is something that's going to be painful for a lot of people. Uh, it may turn out to have conclusions that you and I don't like or that, uh, that the people on the left don't like. I don't know what the conclusions are going to be. But I think if we don't put it all out on the table, uh, we suffer as a country by having these doubts left unresolved. You know, during the period after the Kennedy assassination, you had the Warren Commission. It was a very painful process for the country to go through after Kennedy's assassination has not put all the theories to bed, but it was still an enormously important thing to do. And, uh, and and I think something like this to try and reestablish people's faith in the uh, political objectivity and credibility of uh, federal law enforcement is uh, is highly needed at the moment. Ambassador, very quickly, if Jeff Sessions won't do it, if he's not up to the job, is it time for him to step down and resign? Yeah, you know, I, I I've known Jeff Sessions for a long time since he was he was just brutalized and treated so unfairly by the Democrats when he was nominated to be a district court judge back during the Reagan administration. Uh, I think he's capable of stepping up and doing it. I don't know why he's been so reticent, but you know, this is a moment where uh, you, you know you're called by history to do the right thing here, and I think he needs to do it. We have been talking with former U.N. ambassador. Why he's not the secretary of state is beyond me, but let that go. Fox News analyst John Bolton, ambassador, dynamite stuff. Have a great weekend, and thank you for coming on. My pleasure, and you and your listeners have a great weekend, too. God bless you. 617-266-6868. Okay, your call's next, I promise. WRKO. Anne in North Attleboro, you're up next. Go ahead, Anne. You are so off base about Jeff Sessions, okay? If it wasn't for the Robert Mueller investigation, we wouldn't have any of this information. None of it, okay? And the reason we have the Mueller investigation is because Sessions stepped down. Now, no and, somebody is guilty. Anne, huh? can you do me a favor? Anne, can you do me yeah. a favor? Um, can, Brittany, can you... You're, Okay, go ahead. We're having a problem with your cell phone. I can't. I can barely hear you. Okay, Jeff Sessions has been playing them all along. He knows what he's doing. How? Can you hear me now? No, you're breaking up on me. Oh. Let's let's fix her phone and see if we can get her back on because I I can't hear her. Let's go to Gene and Drake. It. Go ahead, Gene. Yeah, Jeff. I've been listening to this show for a long time. And every day I listen to it, I get more and more irritated. What I'm confused with is, aren't we paying the bills? Yes. Why, why are we paying for a government that doesn't work for us? Why are we paying to have such a corrupt government? Why are we paying our taxes? Why doesn't this stuff ever end? It's been going on forever. And it never seems to end. It doesn't matter what party's in power. There is total corruption in our government. And I'm sick of paying for it. I'm sick of paying well, taxes to a government that doesn't work for the people that elect them. Gene, it's even worse. Okay, I'm not trying to, you know, pump you up and mm -hmm. inflame you even more, but I'm going to be candid with you. You now have members of Congress. Ron Johnson is one of them, senator from Wisconsin, who says, FBI, whenever we ask the FBI... Could you give us information on Strzok? Could you give us information on Comey? Could you give us information on Andy McCabe? On any of these decisions, they tell us to go fly a kite. Even though constitutionally, Congress, a yeah, well, Congress has full oversight over the FBI. Who the hell does the FBI think they are? The secret police? Right. Pay them. 
They don't want to do their job. Don't pay them. Just well, shut the money off. Well, what I would do is I would cite them for contempt. I mean, what I would do, I'm not kidding. I mean, look, the question is this. Who does the FBI answer to? Because they think now they answer to themselves. They literally think now they're an agency above the law, above the people. That, that's, by the way, the definition of a secret police. That's what they think they are. Well, it's now time for Congress to step up to the plate. You see, nobody has the guts to do what needs to be done. Cite them for contempt and then haul their rear end off to jail. I mean, I'm serious. That's, that's how you do it. But oh, instead, they just send letter after letter after letter after letter because, Gene, you know what the problem is? We don't have enough principled patriots anymore. I Nobody's know. got the guts to do what needs I, to be done. I worked my whole life I in business, and I know that if I didn't do my job, I didn't get paid, period. I worked for a living. I worked from the time I was 16 years old. And I got paid because I worked. I did my job. If these people don't want to do their job, don't pay them. Uh, Gene, thank you very much for that call. Judy in Needham. Go ahead, Judy. Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Um, I've been wondering why Sessions hasn't been doing anything, and I am also Tell wondering if he hasn't been threatened personally or his family been threatened by the Clinton Mafia. And I don't know if you know that this past Monday that the doctor, the surgeon who exposed the Clinton Foundation's corruption in Haiti was found dead. Originally, his um, the police who entered said it was an assault. He had a knife wound in his chest. And, oh, he's a surgeon, and he missed his heart, and he bled out. And his 11-year-old daughter found him. Now, that seems suspicious that you would allow your daughter, even if you commit suicide, to find you. And I'm wondering if, like I said, if Sessions is being threatened. And I don't Judy, put my fear, sense. to be very candid with you, my fear is I think it's the exact opposite. I don't think he's being threatened. I think he's being blackmailed. Well, threatened I, or blackmailed. No, one no, or the but what other. I mean is this, Judy. I think they may have something on him. I don't know what it is, but I think they may have something on him. Because I had Congressman Matt Gates on, who kept pushing him when he met with him, saying, You got to investigate Hillary again. You got to investigate the FBI. What are you doing? And all he kept doing, Sessions, was looking at his uh, a Justice Department aides, and as G Matt Gates said it, the congressman, is he the leader of the Justice Department, or is he an employee of the Justice Department? So they have neutered him, and my question is, what do they have on Sessions? And if he is compromised, let him go. Get somebody who's not afraid. Give me a call. Nobody else wants to do it? I'll do it. More with your calls. Don't Touch that dial. The voice of Boston is you. 680 WRKO Boston, 93.7 WEEI HD2 Lawrence Boston. It's one o'clock.